There's no place on Earth quite like Dubai, the hub of futuristic architecture and revolutionary technology and a playground for creating the tallest, most luxurious skyscrapers that we've ever seen. The ultra-modern metropolis already has an endless list of world-renowned landmarks, but there's a group of exceedingly impressive projects currently in production. A trip to Dubai is like stepping into the future, and we're about to show you exactly why. It's not nicknamed the City of Gold for no reason. Aside from literally being able to withdraw bricks of gold from ATMs, Dubai is one of the wealthiest cities on Earth, and they sure know how to put their money to good use. Soaring above the cloud line is the undisputed icon of the city, the world's tallest skyscraper, the Burj Khalifa. With 163 floors ascending a startling 828 meters, or 2,716 feet, this colossal structure is easily the tallest building ever made. It's held that title since opening on January 9, 2010. That's not its only claim to fame, though. It also has the elevator with the longest travel distance, the most stories of any building, the highest occupied floor in the world, and the highest outdoor observation deck. Take a look at it next to the Shanghai Tower, which at 2,073 feet is the second tallest building standing today, the Empire State Building, which comes in at 1,554 feet, and the London Eye at 443 feet. Side by side, it's easy to understand how this mammoth of a project cost the city of Dubai a whopping $1.5 billion. Just because the Burj Khalifa is the current tallest building, that doesn't mean that it will be forever. In fact, Saudi Arabia has already got a mega project of its own ready to overtake it. Soon to eclipse the Burj Khalifa is the Jeddah Tower, which is due to open in 2020 and will scrape the sky at exactly one kilometer above the ground. That's 3,280 feet. Dubai saw what Saudi Arabia had in store and, not wanting to fall to second place, put together plans of yet another megastructure that would trump it. With a projected cost of around 3.67 billion AED, close to a billion US dollars, the Dubai Creek Tower will soon break all kinds of records. How tall are we talking exactly? Well, that's yet to be disclosed. At the moment, the development company Emar Properties is keeping the exact height of the tower under wraps. That said, it's estimated to reach around 1,300 meters while styled after an Arabic minaret and resembling a blossoming lily flower. Construction on the eccentric monolith began back in October of 2016 and is scheduled to be finished at some stage in 2020, opening to the public in 2021. It's touted to have up to 10 viewing platforms, some of which will rotate, along with luxury residences, offices, restaurants, and sky gardens inspired by the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. The builders aren't just slapping it in the middle of downtown, though. They're actually creating an entirely new neighborhood called Dubai Creek Harbor, of which the tower will be the illustrious centerpiece. The area is promoted to being able to accommodate close to 470,000 people when finished. Have you ever thought that skyscrapers are just a tad too boring, too repetitive? Well, the futuristic minds of Dubai have one heck of a mega project in store to change that. Get ready, because in 2020 we will see the world's first 80-story, 420-meter-tall dynamic tower. In other words, it's a fully rotating skyscraper. And when all is said and done, it's set to cost just over 1.2 billion US dollars. Construction hasn't been easy, though. It's been a long journey for the Dynamic Tower Hotel, also known as the Da Vinci Tower, with planning starting way back in 2008. The highlight of this new-aged building is the rotating floors, which take about 90 minutes to complete a 360-degree circle. You'll need between $4 million and $40 million to buy a floor or an apartment when they go to sale, depending on how high in the building they sit. Best of all, residents will be able to control the rotation speed and direction of their individual luxury apartment. So if you want to catch the sunrise, just rotate your apartment 90 degrees to the left. Or feel like making your acrophobic guests dizzy? Just turn the speed up to max. Aside from this never-before-seen feature, the tower will be the world's first prefabricated skyscraper. In other words, every individual rotating piece or every floor can be built in a factory and then shipped to the construction site to be attached to the central cylinder. This means that construction can be up to 30% quicker than regular skyscrapers. Could this be the future of architecture and construction? In case you haven't noticed, Dubai clearly has a love for any and all things futuristic. That's why they've gone ahead and developed another amazing mega project, the so-called Museum of the Future. With a projected cost of 499 million AED, or about 109 million USD, the innovative Dubai landmark will be one of the most expensive of its kind ever made. On the outside, it will resemble the shape of an eye. 
which is supposed to relate to ideas of perception and knowledge. On the inside, it will show off the most impressive feats of human creativity and technology, with more robots on hand than we'd ever need. The museum will showcase three main themes. One, the relationship between robots and humans. Two, how robots and AI can improve human capabilities. And three, how AI will affect how humans make decisions in the future. Like many other of the spectacular projects mentioned today, the Museum of the Future is scheduled to be completed in time for the Dubai 2020 Expo in October. Cities are known to take expos very seriously, having built some of the most iconic landmarks on Earth in preparation for their own. The Eiffel Tower in Paris, the Space Needle in Seattle, and the Atomium in Brussels, to name a few. Next up, we've got one of Dubai's most famous long-standing icons, the Burj Al Arab, better known unofficially as the world's first seven-star hotel. As one of the city's first mega-projects, the Burj Al Arab was completed over two decades ago, in 1999. Despite that, however, it still remains a symbol of ultimate luxury. The unique building sits on its very own man-made island and is shaped like a sail. At the time, it cost around 1 billion US dollars to construct, largely due to the immense work needed to secure foundations in the sand below. If you feel like renting out one of the 202 rooms on offer, you'll need to fork out at least 2,000 bucks a night. And that's just for the cheap rooms. Pfft, chump change, right? Then why not stay in the outrageously lavish royal suite? As a room truly fit for a king, it'll set you back a whopping 24 grand per night. At least you'll get to play on one of the provided 24 karat gold iPads. We've heard of the Hyperloop before, right? If you haven't, it's essentially an ultra-high-speed train capable of connecting Dubai and Abu Dhabi in 12 minutes. That's close to seven times faster than highway driving. Fast train? Eh, big deal, we've seen it before. But wait till you hear what Dubai has in store next for transport. Dubai to Abu Dhabi is one thing, but how about Dubai to India? In just two hours, the proposed underwater train could connect the city of gold to Mumbai via Fujairah, joining two nations which are close to 2,000 kilometers apart, about 1,200 miles in just two hours. But how would it all work? Surely you can't build a tunnel that long. According to a video released by the UAE's National Advisor Bureau Limited, the underwater journey would be within a long tube floating just beneath the surface of the Arabian Sea. It wouldn't be concreted to the ocean floor, it would simply float there, suspended and held in place by a network of floating rigs. Would you be brave enough to book a ticket on a floating underwater train? For another out-of-this-world Dubai creation, let's take a look at Aladdin City an incredible tourism-oriented project due to open in the not-too-distant future. The eye-catching development will span 1,500 feet, about 450 meters, along Dubai Creek, encompassing close to 4,000 acres all told. Aladdin City will feature three large towers, each inspired by the tales of Aladdin and the Arabian Nights. The towers, which will be up to 34 stories high, will house offices, hotels, and rooms for close to 900 cars. Most importantly, they'll resemble giant genie lamps, while being connected by stunning, golden, air-conditioned bridges and walkways. So how much does it cost to build something that stands out from a city renowned for standing out? About $500 million. Okay, so moving on, what's one of the first images that comes into your mind when someone says Dubai? Seriously, let us know down in the comments. For the majority of the people, it's the captivating man-made islands. Whether you picture the world map or the palm tree, the artificial sands are iconic. The palm tree, also known as the Palm Jumeirah, welcomed its first residents in 2007 and was built entirely from sand and rocks. Trust us, the cost of transporting all of that material from coasts and quarries didn't come cheap. Any guesses? All up, the city forked out $12 billion. And that doesn't even include the $1.5 billion Atlantis Hotel Resort, which has its own water park and underwater aquarium. The world map, on the other hand, has suffered a few setbacks, the most pressing of which was the suspending of production in 2009 due to the global financial crisis. Nowadays, unfortunately, because of weathering, partial sinking, and erosion, the world islands have lost their well-defined borders. Look at Central America, it's practically non-existent. Alas, Dubai doesn't give up. They've pitched a brand new idea for a man-made island, the Jumeirah Bay Island, shaped like a seahorse. The seahorse sped past the world map in production and is already open to the public, housing a yacht club, apartment buildings, and a 100-room, five-star luxury Bulgari hotel. If you can't hop in a helicopter and check it out from above, then one of the best ways to see the island 
and everything we've spoken of so far is through the 150-meter-tall Dubai frame. Located in Zabil Park, the 62 million US dollar structure is one of the newest additions to the world-famous skyline. We all know that Dubai is a city with a unique mesh of old and new, and the Dubai frame showcases exactly that. Visitors who peer from one side can see the futuristic metropolis, while those who stand on the other can peek out at the older, more traditional neighborhoods. It's one of Dubai's more subtle mega-projects, but it's amazing nonetheless. Where does all this money come from? Some of it stems from the ultra-rich Dubai royal family. Why not see how they spend their billions? Or if you haven't quenched your thirst for new technology, check out 15 weird inventions that made people extremely rich. China first floated the idea, see what we did there, of an underwater train to the United States way back in 2014. It's a daunting project to be sure, and one that would require the sharpest engineering minds on the planet. The proposed rail line would be more than 8,000 miles long and connect China, Russia, Canada, and the United States. Hence the nickname, the China, Russia, Canada, America line. Here's a bit of perspective. The Trans-Siberian Railway Network, which is the longest railway line in the world, is 5,778 miles long. China's railway to the United States would dwarf the Trans-Siberian Railroad, and traveling on the proposed rail line would be significantly faster and more comfortable. Imagine traveling via bullet train from northeast China up into Siberia. From there, the bullet train would travel towards the Bering Strait and onto Alaska. The most costly portion of the project would be the underwater tunnel connecting Russia to Alaska. It alone would cost about $52 billion. That sum isn't so surprising when you realize the Bering Strait underwater tunnel would be four times longer than the Channel Tunnel that connects the United Kingdom to France. After exiting the Bering Strait Tunnel, the bullet train would then travel into Canada's Yukon Territory, down into British Columbia, and finally into Washington State and beyond. That's just the beginning. The railway could then be expanded to every corner of the United States from California to Florida to New York. When you consider the scope of the project, it's no wonder the railway would cost $200 billion. And frankly, that's just a conservative estimate. You might think of a journey over such a long distance would take weeks, but China's bullet trains are state of the art. The country recently revealed a brand new high-speed maglev bullet train that is capable of reaching a top speed of 385 miles per hour. Traveling from China to the United States via the China-Russia-Canada-America line would take approximately two days. That's pretty impressive considering that a flight from Shanghai to Los Angeles takes about 14 hours. China is on the verge of surpassing the United States to become the largest economy in the world. Skyscrapers pop up in the Middle Kingdom practically overnight, and the country has built an impressive high-speed rail system that rivals the high-speed rail systems in Europe and Japan. The USA doesn't even have a high-speed rail system, although California is planning an $80 billion high-speed rail network that would connect San Francisco to Los Angeles. China's high-speed rail network is still relatively new. State-owned China Railway began planning the country's high-speed rail system in 1990, which is nearly 30 years after Japan's first Shinkansen launched. Despite the late start, China's high-speed rail system is just as advanced as Japan's, and China even beat out Japan for the rights to build a high-speed rail network in Indonesia. In 1999, China began construction on the first leg of its high-speed rail network. The $1.9 billion rail line began service in 2003, and bullet trains that run on the line now reach top speeds of 160 miles per hour. Construction then increased exponentially. In 2012, China opened the 1,428-mile-long Beijing-Guangzhou high-speed rail line. It's the longest high-speed rail line in the world and has reduced the travel time between Beijing and Guangzhou to just eight hours. So how has China managed to catch up to Europe and Japan so quickly? Well, it all comes down to money. China's high-speed rail network has so far cost between 17 million and 21 million per kilometer. That might seem like a lot of money, but that's a bargain compared to other parts of the world. In Europe, that figure is 25 million to 39 million per kilometer. Likewise, California's high-speed rail system will cost about 56 million per kilometer. Cheap labor and less regulation has allowed China to cut costs substantially. China is constantly building better and faster bullet trains. 
The CR 400 AFG train, which can operate at speeds of up to 217 miles per hour in temperatures as low as 40 degrees below Celsius, will travel from Shenyang to Harbin and make stops in other northern cities in China. A bullet train that can withstand extreme cold temperatures will be a necessity if China hopes to build a high-speed rail network to the United States. Temperatures in Siberia, Alaska, and the Canadian tundra can drop well below 40 degrees Celsius. 60 below is rare, but it does happen occasionally. There are other ways China is preparing for a possible underwater train to the United States. China Railway wants to build a high-speed rail line connecting mainland China to Taiwan. The Taiwan Strait Tunnel project could cost as much as $30 billion, and it would be a good test run for a Bering Strait Tunnel. Money is no object when it comes to expanding China's high-speed rail network. The country spent about $116.8 billion on railway projects in 2018 alone. The money was put to good use, as China Railway built 2,910 miles of track that year, of which 2,549 miles were for high-speed trains. An underwater train from China to the United States is a long ways away, and some people think such a project would be impossible. However, China is showing the world that it's more capable of building an underwater railway. Late last year, China began construction on the $3.6 billion ningbo Zhushan Railway, which will be the country's first underwater high-speed rail line. It'll be a test run of sorts for the China-Russia-Canada-America line. The ningbo Zhushan Railway will connect Ningbo, a port city south of Shanghai, to Zhushan, an archipelago off the east coast. The ambitious project will include a 10-mile subsea tunnel, and it's expected to be completed by early next year. The bullet trains that travel along the railway can reach a maximum speed of 155 miles per hour and levitate above a magnetic track. The subsea tunnel will consist of three levels, a maintenance shaft on top, a main tunnel section in the middle, and an emergency track below. The tunnel will float in the water and be anchored to the ocean floor via tethers. When the project is complete, passengers will be able to travel between Hangzhou and Zhushan in 80 minutes. The same trip by car would take more than three hours. The project is part of China's $1 trillion Belt and Road Initiative that aims to create a modern-day Silk Road and build rail, land, and maritime corridors from China to Southeast Asia, South Asia, the Middle East, and Africa. China may want to build an underwater train to the United States, but one question remains. Will it be allowed to? There's no doubt that with enough money, China could complete this daunting mega-project, but the United States and Canada might not be so keen. Building the China to Russia portion of the railway will be no problem. China and Russia get along swimmingly, but China's current relationship with the United States is the worst it's ever been in decades. Diplomatic relations would have to improve significantly for the China-Russia-Canada-America line to become a reality. There are other hurdles as well. Even if U.S.-China relations improve, there's still the issue of building a rail line through Alaska and Canada. Much of North America's west coast is made up of national, state, and provincial parks. A bullet train would pose a serious risk to threatened and endangered animals. Building the line around those parks would increase the cost of the mega project significantly. Back in 2018, plans for an underwater high-speed railway tunnel was given the go-ahead by the Chinese government. According to some reports, it's believed this will be the world's first underwater vacuum vacuum tunnel for high-speed trains. This new line plans to link the mainland city of Ningbo and the archipelago city Joshan. Both are in the Zhejiang province and are 40 miles apart. The biggest logistic problem is the Hangzhou Bay, an area of the East China Sea separating the cities. At the moment, traveling via car from Ningbo to Zhejiang takes around one and a half hours over the Ningbo Sea Bridge. This new tunnel will significantly reduce the traveling time to around 30 minutes, while traveling from the city Hangzhou to Zhoushan via train will eventually be around 80 minutes. Previously, Zhoushan wasn't connected to the country's main railway system. The underwater plan was included in China's big public transport ambition, the Yangzhou Railway Plan. The total line will be 77 kilometers, or around 48 miles long altogether, most of which will be newly created tracks. The underwater tunnel itself will be 16.2 kilometers, or 10 miles in length, making this the longest underwater tunnel in the country. The current champion is the underwater tunnel section on the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge. That section is four miles in size. The new tunnel will most excitingly have access for the famously quick bullet trains. These vehicles in China have a top speed of around 250 kilometers, or 155 miles per hour at the moment. Hey, I can drive that fast. What's the big deal? Yeah, kidding, not really. Along the line will be seven stations to accommodate as many travelers as possible. Four of these stations will be newly built, while three will be redeveloped. 
During May 2020, drilling for the tunnel was completed after halting construction for a number of months due to the global events. In August 2020, the technical plans were then greenlit by authorities. The tunnel will be 14 meters or 46 feet in diameter and hit a maximum depth of 78 meters or 256 feet below the seabed. The tunnel will be built with the aid of an 11 kilometer or 7 mile long tunneling shield. These large metal cylinders help make it possible for workers to build underwater. Originally, the tunnel was slated to open by 2025, yet due to the delay, it's now likely to be completed by 2026 at the earliest. This massive undertaking was estimated to cost $3.6 billion in 2018. China's high-speed rail system is constantly growing. By the end of 2020, the length of the whole line amounted to 37,900 kilometers. That's nearly 23,550 miles. China has practically doubled the size of their high-speed line since 2015. All of their various railway lines came to 146,000 kilometers, or around 90,907 miles in total. The World Bank examined China's costs on their railway lines. China was paying between 17 million to 21 million per kilometer for high-speed rail, while in Europe it was between 25 million to 39 million per kilometer. So on the high end, that means on average China has spent nearly, ready, 796 billion dollars on the system to date. The document also delivered that railway tunnels cost between 10 million to 15 million per kilometer. While in the US, it was as high as 50 million dollars. So for the new underwater tunnel on the high end, we're looking at a fee of at least 150 million. This of course doesn't differentiate between tunnels within land and those underwater, which will likely cost more. During 2018, China planned to increase their bullet train network over the next two years with a further $554 million in funding. In 2021, the US think tank Marco Polo examined China's high-speed railway. They estimated that they have spent $602 billion on just constructing the actual tracks. However, the income from them has generated a net benefit of $378 billion into the economy since the high-speed rail's inception. China is also evolving their railway service when it comes to their trains. In 2020, they introduced the world's fastest driverless bullet train, Scary, that can reach 217 miles per hour, while the Shanghai Maglev, the world's first magnetic levitation, or Maglev line, that opened in 2004. It can hit a top speed of 268 miles per hour. Then, last year, China began testing a maglev train that can reach a massive 373 miles per hour. Since we're talking about underwater tunnels, we can't exactly miss talking about the longest underwater railway tunnel in the world, the Channel Tunnel, also known as the Channel, or the Eurostar. This tunnel connects the UK to France, giving the island its only physical connection to mainland Europe. The tunnel is 31.5 miles long, with 23.5 miles being under sea, over double the length of China's future aquatic tunnel. Opened in 1994, the Channel Tunnel cost the equivalent of nearly $20 billion to build today. Yet the first idea of the tunnel was all the way back in 1802. This mammoth construction had 13,000 workers during its peak. Vehicles are driven into shuttles that are being pulled by trains. Then, they're ferried between the nations. But there's also passenger trains available. All the trains are limited to a maximum speed of 100 miles per hour. During 2004, one of the boring machines used in constructing the Channel Tunnel was put up for auction on eBay, a piece of history for the buyer. In the end, it was sold for around $56,000. The base price of a ticket to drive your car through the tunnel is around 176 one way or 139 for a return. Another impressive example is Japan's Saiken Tunnel. Connecting the islands of Honshu and Hokkaido, this railway tunnel is a massive 33.5 miles long in total, with 14.3 miles of tunnel under the sea, making this tunnel the longest in the world that features an underwater segment. On top of its length, it's also one of the deepest tunnels around. It's built 790 feet below sea level within the Sagaro Strait. Opened in 1988, plans for the Saiken Tunnel have been around in one form or another since 1939. Yet it wasn't until 1955 after a major typhoon sunk a number of passenger vessels that plans began to properly form. Around 1957, once the Japanese government surveyed the creation of an underwater tunnel, they discovered it would cost $167 million at the time. The actual cost of building the tunnel that started in 1977 was much higher. It came to $7 billion back then, which would be $30 billion today. In 1976, the workers building the tunnel struck a patch of soft rock that caused the construction to flood with nearly 80 tons of seawater per minute. It took two months to control the leak, and no one was fatally injured. During 2012, the project to create the deepest underwater tunnel in the world was approved by Norway's government. This would be the Ryfast. 
Connecting the city of Stravanger to the district of Strand, the tunnel would open for the public fully in 2020. With nearly 12 miles in length total, this road tunnel is the longest and deepest subsea tunnel in the world. It's 958 feet below sea level, beating its psych and rival by 168 feet. The Ryfast actually consists of two tunnel systems. Firstly, there's the Rifolk Tunnel that's just shy of nine miles in length. The second is the Hunvag Tunnel, a little over three miles. Previously, cars would have to get a ferry from Stravanger to the town of Solbach in Strand. This trip would take 45 minutes, as long as a ferry is already there, of course. With this new tunnel, the journey will take just 15 minutes. Back in 2012, the project was estimated to cost around $614 million. The cost was offset by nearly $44 million coming from grants from local governments and business communities. The remaining fee will be returned via tolls on the tunnel's entrances. Final fact finished, speaking of construction underwater, it's possible to stay in a hotel that sits beneath the ocean. The Morocco residence is a luxury hotel room at the resort, Conrad Maldives Rangali Island. It took more than seven years of design and construction to finish the Tunmun Cheplapkok link. There were 4,500 workers a day laboring to finish the massive tunnel, which now connects the Northwest New Territories and the Hong Kong Boundary Crossing facilities with North Lantau and the Hong Kong International Airport. The purpose of the project was to free up traffic on Hong Kong's busiest highways and shorten the traveling time between Tun Mun South and the airport by 20 minutes. But these goals were in no way small. The tunnel had to be large enough to handle three lanes of traffic and, of course, it all had to be done underwater. The undersea portion of the tunnel is 5 kilometers long and includes 42 mined cross passages arranged at 100 meter intervals for a total of 57 passages. Through its construction, the tunnel broke multiple records, including being the deepest and longest underwater tunnel in Hong Kong and being the only tunnel in Hong Kong to have a service gallery underneath its carriageway. But breaking records goes hand in hand with breaking budgets. The total cost of the link was 46.71 billion Hong Kong dollars or 6.1 billion US, which includes 1.91 billion Hong Kong dollars for detailed design and site investigation, about 246.3 million US dollars, plus 44.8 billion Hong Kong dollars for the actual construction, around 5.78 billion US dollars. When the project officially started in 2011, the first step was to create an artificial island of about 150 hectares using the surrounding sand and rock. The creation of these grounds cost 6.99 billion Hong Kong dollars or 901.6 million US dollars. Once the island was finished, an entire research team had to investigate the groundwork to ensure it was safe for the tunnel. They also had to decide on the best way to go about forming the tunnel. The budget for this part of the project was 137 million Hong Kong dollars, about 17.7 million US. And then another 8.66 billion Hong Kong dollars, around 1.1 billion US dollars, had to be allotted for creating service roads for the workers and their heavy machinery. But forming the actual tunnel is where things started to get really costly. Dealing with huge water pressures up to 5.5 bar and creating a tunnel that can accommodate three lanes of traffic is no easy feat. In order to get the job done, the project required the use of a record-breaking tunnel boring machine, or TBM. The tunnels were formed about 55 meters below sea level using the Tun Moon Czech Lepcock TBM, the largest machine of its kind in the entire world. The TBM has a diameter of 17.63 meters or 57.84 feet and is as high as a six-story building. It was created for the project and used to form the perfect hole that could accommodate the massive highway. The design included the Tilimach, a teleo-operated system with a robotic arm that could be used to replace the cutter disks once they became dull. Each cutter disc weighed 220 kilograms, and the Tilimach cut changing times down from 45 minutes to 25 minutes. Using the TBM decreased the environmental impact of construction, since it reduced the disposal of around 11 million cubic meters of marine sediment, equivalent to about 4,900 standard-sized swimming pools. It also helped to limit the number of workers needed to form the tunnel, but those who were needed had to be provided with safe conditions. The atmospheric pressure under the sea is nearly six times greater than that at the surface, so the workers used pressurized living chambers. They were transferred by pressurized shuttles to the excavation chambers, then transferred back at the end of the workday. The tunnel also had room for a service gallery, the first of its kind in Hong Kong, which included drainage pipes, the fire service system, power supplies, and signal control systems. 
To keep the water away while boring the tunnel, the team had to design the first cellular diaphragm wall cofferdam ever constructed in Hong Kong. A cofferdam is a temporary structure built to keep the water away, while a cellular cofferdam consists of interlocking steel sheet pilings driven into the ground to form a series of interconnecting cells. The diaphragm type is a set of large diameter circular cells interconnected by smaller cells. Based on this model, the world's first 500 meter long 15-cell caterpillar-shaped cofferdam was used. The cells were made of concrete and kept the water away while also giving the team adequate space to work. Creating the cofferdams and using the TBM brought this section of the project to 18.2 billion Hong Kong dollars or 2.35 billion US dollars. While there was no shortage of innovation or skill poured into the creation of the link, there were still a few setbacks that delayed construction. Originally scheduled for opening in 2018, unforeseen ground conditions pushed the tunnel's opening back by two years. It all started when they discovered low stone columns where the artificial island was, which forced the tunnel to be lowered by 10 meters. This meant the team would have to realign the tunnel to protect the TBM from damage. The tunnel design also needed to be changed because the soil conditions were more complicated than expected and weren't able to hold up against the original design process. After repeated urging, the contractor finally submitted a plan to fix the project, but apparently the construction costs were unreasonably high. This put the whole project in limbo for a while as they tried to come to an agreement on just how much realigning the tunnel should cost. The next problem that popped up was the pandemic in 2020. It caused a breakdown of the supply chain as well as labor shortages. Despite these difficulties, the team was eventually able to source alternative supplies, but the project just narrowly missed being pushed back again to 2021. Once the tunnel was almost completed, it was time to work on the finishing touches and construct the structures that would facilitate traffic and control workers. Construction of a toll plaza was done on the island. It was approximately 5.4 hectares and included associated structures for a cost of 3.05 billion Hong Kong dollars or 393.4 million US dollars. They also constructed an administration building, control building, and ancillary buildings to house workers for the cost of 2.59 billion Hong Kong dollars or 334 million US dollars. And finally, in 2020, the team developed a design and gathered the supplies needed to install a traffic control and surveillance system. These systems were constructed for a final cost of 158 million Hong Kong dollars or 20.38 million US dollars, bringing the project to its massive total budget of 46.71 billion Hong Kong dollars, the equivalent of 6.1 billion US dollars. The Northern Connection officially opened for traffic on December 27, 2020. It's expected to serve up to 2,200 vehicles per hour and cut traffic on Hong Kong's highways by at least a fifth. With the creation of the Caterpillar coffer dams and the world's largest tunnel boring machine, the project has made history as one of the most innovative roadway projects in the world. While setbacks may have complicated things, there's no doubt that the Link is one of the most impressive and quickly made underwater highways ever. It's the team's hope that their innovation will help inspire quicker tunnel construction all over the planet, resulting in reduced traffic and environmental impact and faster ways for commuters to get where they need to go. Hong Kong's newest tunnel is definitely impressive, but the record for the longest and deepest underwater roadway in the world still goes to Japan's Seikun Tunnel, which cost 1.1 trillion yen, or 7 billion US dollars, to construct. It's an incredible 23.3 kilometers long and 330 feet deep. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.